Hi FlossTube, I'm Lori and welcome to Once Upon a Stitch. Today is Tuesday, March 22nd, 2022. I'm here in my craft room and welcome. Anyone who is new to my channel, I hope you, you enjoy what you see. Uh, give you a little heads up that my viewers are amazing. Um, I can't say anything nicer about them because they're just amazing. So welcome. And first of all, I'd like to thank everybody who made comments on my Templar Prophecy here and or in Instagram, on Instagram. Um, I posted the finish on my Instagram page and yeah, it was, it was well received. Um, so I was very happy um, that everybody liked it as much as I did. And like I said, it was bittersweet that I finished it. Um, Michael came over on Sunday. We had a little family dinner um, this past Sunday, two days ago. And I showed it to him and he loved it. And we're talking about framing it. Um, we're gonna see about getting it professionally framed first and see like the cost and everything and then what our options are. So. Once it is fully framed, um, I will definitely share it with you. He said he's going to be hang. He and Rebecca are going to be hanging it in their living room. So, so excited about that! Seeing that like in a frame. And what else? Oh, I'll just give you a really funny story. That day, um, I invited them over. I was making a corn corn beef dinner, and um, so we got together. And Caleb was in his high chair. Gianna was in a booster chair at the table. So we were all sitting around the dining room table. And, you know, as two-year-olds do, um, until what, they're 22? They're tantrums? <laughs> so Caleb got a little upset at the table and he was crying. And Gianna was sitting across from him and just like looking at him like, what's going on? And then he wouldn't stop. So she was like starting to pout. And the next thing you know, she's hysterical crying. And we have two hysterical crying kids at the table. And the rest of us are kind of like chuckling because it was so adorable to see her so upset because he was upset. And maybe he scared her. I don't know. We don't know. I mean, they don't tell you anything. And, uh, G Gianna was um, just seven months that day. So, it you know. It was fun to see them interact a little bit with each other in different ways. Um, we put them down, uh, well, I put, we put Gianna down. Um, I put a blanket out on my rug and, uh, you know, we sat there with toys and, and Caleb would come over, but um, he doesn't have little, little ones to really play with. Um, so, you know, we were very cautious about him being rough with her so but it was a fun day uh, for sure it went by way too quickly we had a fun time um what else can i tell you oh the the saturday before sunday when i had a meet up at needleworkers um it was a great time i picked up some haul um, i'll share that at the very end in case um, some people don't like sharing haul and um you know we had tons of laugh i mean we we zoom twice a week practically for those that can make it we zoom on Wednesdays and Saturday nights and so we do see each other on zoom but it was so different seeing each other in person sitting across the table laughing um, we even got comments from the owners that they were so happy to like hear us be happy with each other in person so it was it was a great day um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what happened there that's going to affect my plans for April. But first, I want to get right into March Madness. Let's see, I just want to make sure. Well, oh, um, I just want to share a, a goodie that um, my friend Helen shared with us on Saturday. She gave us some fabric. She bought um, a bolt of this green plaid and she shared some with each of us. So I'm so excited. Um, next, well, maybe spring pieces and St. Patty's Day pieces. Um, this will be an awesome finish. So thank you so much, Helen. Okay, 
on to March Madness round two. Okay, so I'll show you what was put up against each other and then we'll go over what will be moving forward. So the first one, that of the two, is Little House Needleworks, Little House Neighborhood. And I had um, started this house. And it was funny because when I showed it in my last video, seeing it on screen, you catch things. I noticed that I hadn't put a little bit of grass down. Not that it was a big deal, but it's a pretty much symmetrical piece in certain respects. So I was able to go back and add like six stitches. Um, so here's the whole piece. And I completed the red house, the brick house. And these are the little stitches that I'm referring to in front of the sheep. See there on front of this sheep. Well, I hadn't put those in. So I put those in and then I completed the house. And I believe I just have to bring the grass over and then I can start working down on the borders. So that was um, my first piece. And this went up against, oh, this is stitched on a 28 count Ivory Lugana. The stitch count on this is 177 by 232. And, um, and my goal is to finish it this year. Fingers crossed, that's some dense stitching. The next one that is up against Little House Neighborhood, I've got my working copies here, because is uh, Christmas Garden by Blackbird Design. I had this whole uh, border and garden to complete. And Christmas Garden. And let's see which one's going to move forward. Try putting this behind it so I can see it better. It's completed. Um, it, it, it was bigger than I thought, but then again, I stitched it on a 28 count. Um, this is Platinum Lugana. The stitch count was 225 by 272. And I used the call for um, threads. They were I believe they were gentle arts threads. No, they were classic color works and gentle arts, two of each. There were only four colors in the entire project. And um, I'm so happy that I finished this one. So that's another finish this year. Yay! So that was my that was my plan for um, doing March Madness to, to see how many finishes I can um, get done. Because in most of the months I have new starts, um, except for March Madness and maybe one or one other month. But um, for the most part, I schedule new starts in the beginning of every month. Okay, okay so that's the finish, yay! So, um, so Little House Neighborhood will move on to the next bracket. The next one I worked on is Little House Neighborhood, oh, Little House Needleworks Kringles. This is what it looks like when it will be finished. And I did the bricks in the second room around the second room there I did from here oops top bricks and side and then there's um an inside border that's in a crew that goes all the way around the inside so I think what I'll do when I pick this up again oh well I don't know if it's going to be in this month or next month or whenever but whenever I pick it up I think I'll finish all the bricks across and down and then go back and do the two rooms and that's the whole piece it's a fun stitch um, I like I realize I like blocks of color when I'm working I find it 
easier to make progress on it. And I just enjoy it. I think I'm a process stitcher than a product, even though I do pretty well in completing them. And that one was up against, or is up against, and be kind to one another by Needlework Press. This is what the piece will look like when it's completed. It is not completed. But I did get a lot done. So what I've gotten done was, last time you saw it was up to these flowers. So I did the numbers, the next alphabet, and this motif, some of these, I don't know, stars, for a better word. I have to fill in the heart yet, and I have to finish the house. Coming closer. Oops. And this is what it looks like so far. Again, I have to stand up and move back. I can't even get it on. I can't move back too far because my sewing machine is right behind me. Um, but it's a long piece. And if you noticed in the alphabet, I did three letters in another color. It wasn't called for. That's my mother's name, Pia, P-I-A. So I did the A, I, and P in one of the call for reds in the pattern. So which one is closer to a finish, Kringles or this? This one. So this will go um, forward in the next round along with Little House Neighborhood. So let me just put this back in the envelope. And this is what the bracket will look like. So Christmas Garden went up against the Little House Neighborhood. Christmas Garden was completed. So Little House Neighborhood moves forward. And Be Kind was up against Kringles. This one is closer to a finish than Kringles. So And Be Kind will move forward. So again, now I will work on this two days, this two days, whichever is closer to a finish. If not finished, I'm thinking um, And Be Kind will move up if it's not finished in the two days. If it's finished in the two days, then Little House Neighborhood will get another two days. And I'm not gonna come back after four days to show you which is moving forward. Um, because I'm gonna finish the month of what I, um, being that I finished it early, I was gonna have one day left at the end, but because I was finishing things in one day instead of the two days, I accumulated some extra days along the month. So I'm just gonna move forward with the extra days and putting in some whips that I'm working on, um, something that I can work on maybe on my whip go board. And then my plan is to come back on April 3rd. And you said, why April 3rd and not like the 1st or the 31st? This is why. When we were together at uh, Needleworkers, I brought up a silly thought, but I said, maybe people will like the idea. I believe I saw, saw this on, I think it's her name, Curly Girl Stitcher on Floss Tube. She did 12 new starts in 12 hours on New Year's Eve, I believe it was. And every hour she came back, showed you what she started and what progress she made on it. So I brought it to my group and I said, what do you think if during retreat, we did six new starts in six hours? Now, retreat starts Thursday evening or Thursday afternoon at 3 p.m. technically. Um, and it goes to Sunday, I believe 6 p.m. But you know, people start leaving on Sunday, all different times of the day. So we have Friday and Saturday. So I said, so what do you think of that? six new starts and six hours during retreat. They love the idea. So um, we brought it to Arlene because it's Arlene's retreat. Um, she had stepped away when I brought this up and then she came back and we said, Arlene, what do you think of this? And she was all for it. Um, but we have to work out the logistics of it, of when it's gonna happen, how it's gonna happen, 
what we're going to do, how we're going to handle it. So in the meantime, um, some of the girls in my, or ladies in the group had said that on April 1st, they want to do 24 hours of cross stitching that weekend. And, um, so what, what that means to us is our zoom meeting will start like maybe Friday morning or something or Friday afternoon. We haven't set the, the times yet and people will go in and out when they're available. Because I says, oh, gee, off the top of my head, I don't know if I have Caleb that Friday. And they said, no problem. You know, you, you come in when you can. And people, you know, in case they have to go and do run errands because it is a weekend. So it's not like a continuous um, period. of. So it's in and out that, that weekend. So what we decided, somebody came up with this idea, D, is to six new starts in six hours, but do it over the two evenings, like Friday evening do um, eight, one, eight, nine, and 10. And then, then Saturday do same times, eight, nine, and 10. So it'll end at 11. And then those that want to stay further or continue working on the project or moving to another project, you know, it's what they want to do. But during those hours, we're going to set a timer. We're going to um, start new projects and see what we get accomplished in that one hour. So in planning this out and thinking about it, I know a lot of uh, my viewers ask me, how many hours a day do you stitch? How, how do you get so much accomplished? And I think it has to do a lot with the pattern itself, of course, but I, I think this will be maybe a good gauge to, to share with you because I'm going to start a new project and I'm going to see what I get done in an hour's time. So, and then I won't work on that project anymore that whole weekend until um, I have that video on the third and I'll show you what happened with March Madness and then I'll show you what I've stitched on or how much I've got accomplished in the one hour on that project. So, I'm going to share with you. I picked the project. I kitted them out. So I'm going to share them with you now. And hopefully I don't change my mind. <laughs> so the first one I'm going to start with is stitching with the housewives. And I want to get one of these trucks um, done. So, and this is called Gingham Greetings and Gingham Greetings 2. So I guess uh, one truck, two trucks. So I'll pick one of those trucks and I'll stitch that on and I'm going to do this in the evening. So it might be a challenge, but I'm going to give it a shot. This is 16 count Ada, black Ada. That I'm going to do this one with the call for colors, which are mostly classic color. And she has the uh, DMC equivalent to it, but I think I have most, if not all the um, classic color works for that. The second one I'm going to start, I believe this was a, um, a viewer sent me this. I think it was Danielle. Um, she had sent me a bunch of patterns and I liked them all, but I didn't know when I was going to get to them. So I thought I'd start this one. Um, and this is Needle Bling Designs and it's called To the Beach and Back. And it says, I love you to the beach and back. And I'm going to stitch this on an 18 count. I believe this is Platinum Ada. And if I had the call for overdies, I selected it. Otherwise, I did the DMC equivalent. And I don't usually show you my, my colors because I have them in snack bags. Um, and it's kind of hard to, to show them all. Um, so that's why I don't usually show my threads. I don't like, I don't like them so much on thread drops. This way I can put my little threads left over in the bag. I put them in towards the back. I have my floss in the front. I have a index, not an index card, a cut paper, the size of an index card to um, 
fit in there to hold it up because I store them in boxes in these drawers that I've shown in the past. The next one's a tiny one. This is Lizzie Kate Home. Um, my friend gave me this one. It's without the charm. And it's just a little ornament. And I'm going to stitch this one. I think it's small, so I believe this is um, 18 count mushroom lugana. And again, um, with the call for colors or DMC equivalents, so I, I do have it all kitted up and ready to go. So that would be the first night, the first three. The second evening, I'm going to do Little House Needleworks Christmas Greetings. I think that is so adorable and this is going to be done on an 18 count country mocha you can see the modeling so that's the second night and I probably looking at this probably will just be working on that border and to see how much I can accomplish on the border out making too many mistakes. The next one is a Lizzie Kate Night Before Christmas Sleds. I'm going to do the little mouse. I haven't done the mouse yet. And this will be done on perforated paper. Can you see that? You can see right through it. So that will be done on perforated paper. I'm actually interested to see how much I do get accomplished in just one hour on something like that and then changing product projects. The next one is a Lizzie Kate. It was a bonus snail mail stamp. And I thought it's adorable. My husband worked for the post office before he retired from there. So um, I want to always do this and I always pushed it aside. So I decided to do it, and I believe this is a 16 count ivory um, Ada. Although it could be platinum. You know, I just grabbed pieces of Ada that I had in my drawers. Um, so they're not always labeled. I, and then I look at my ring of, of samples that I, I've been keeping, and sometimes I don't, I forget to add to them. So, um, but I think that was platinum. Alrighty, so those are the six projects that I'm going to start on April 1st and on April 2nd during the Zoom meeting. And then my plan is to come back April 3rd, update on March Madness, show you what I've completed, or not completed, <laughs> worked on my some other whips that I'm, I'll be able to get in the end of March. And then I'll do the two days of, um, new starts and then I'll come on the my plan is to come on the third you know life gets in the way sometimes so it might be the fourth or but I'll come back as soon as I can and from the third on and show you what progress I've made so I hope you uh, come back and see that okay so I got a little bit of haul I did not do any pre-ordering of um, market patterns because I want to make sure that I really, really like them and I want to look at them in my hands. I want to say, will I really stitch it? So I'm going to be a little bit more selective in um, purchasing patterns because there's some patterns I don't want to stitch. So I'll be giving them away on my, on my channel. I think I'll do the next giveaway in um, my next video. And also I mailed all the last giveaway and this did I go Monday or Friday I can't remember the days just kind of like I think I, I mailed them out on Friday um, we went to the post office and um, I mailed them all out so hopefully this week they'll all be getting them if not already okay um, just last night I got my order from one two three stitch now um, most of it was threads this time, and I only bought two patterns. So I got some um, Rainbow Gallery Petite Treasure Braid. 
Um, I find this sometimes even on one, two, three stitch, it is out of stock. So I want, I have one started, but I noticed that um, some patterns call for it. So I bought one like as a reserve. I bought a Dinky Dyes. I don't remember what chart it was called for, but when um, I go to um, look for it, I'll know where it goes then. And then I bought some um, Weeks Dye Works that I needed. So that came from 123 Stitch and the, Prairie, the new Prairie Schooler with the penguins. And these lights look like really, I don't know, they look different than four stitches in a box. I don't know, do they look different to you? I don't know if it's the color that make them pop, but I really enjoy, I like that one. And then I bought this one, Prairie Schooler Prairie Birds, and I will not be doing them. I know some people are doing them as one piece, um, on one piece of fabric, but I'm going to do them individually. And, um, you know, sometimes I get, see, like something like this, I want to start right away. But now I had, I think, I think it's, I think I put in another new start for April. I think I have six new starts for April plus the six for the stitch one in one hour. So it's like 12 new starts in April. So I probably can't put this in April, but I don't know how many new starts I have in May, but I want to complete some of those little ones that I do did that I will be starting. So, but I do want to get these done too, because I just love them. And I saw um, Amanda, who's Alba Stitches, um, do these, and I just fell in love with them. So I hemmed and hawed, but I, I pressed it by, put in my cart. So this, I, the, the next section I picked up at Needleworkers. Um, Needleworkers has a Facebook page called Silk Weavers. And I believe it's every two weeks on a Friday, they do a virtual sale through their Facebook page. <clears throat> and I believe anybody um, could get on or maybe call them up. It's Needleworkers Delight in Metuchen, New Jersey. And But I think you could just go on their Facebook when they're, when they're having these sales. <clears throat> And what we do is we watch them, they hold up patterns, and then if we want it, and they hold up fabrics, we just say, me please. And um, in my case, they put it in a folder, and then when I go there, whatever is in my folder, plus whatever else I buy that day, they ring me up. <clears throat> now, if you live out of state, they will most likely um, mail you your stuff. You probably have to call up the next day or the next couple of days and give them your information of how you want to pay, your address, and things like that. Or email them. I'm not sure because I don't do that part of the um, of the billing. I just go there and pay. So um, some of this is from that sale and some I bought while I was there. And let's see. This is what I bought on the sale. This is a 20 count Ada in Storm. And I just love it. I don't know what I'm gonna put on it, but I think it's beautiful. And 20 count would be 101 over one. Then um, I also bought this at the sale. This is 14 count Ada, and it's just, um, I think it's a 10 by 10. Yeah, um, piece, it's like for smalls, and it's showing a little bluer, but it's a little more teal in person. And this is called Seaside Melody. I think that is so pretty. Can't wait to stitch some things on this. Then they had package there when I went, I picked up, this is a 14 count, 10 by 10 as well. And this is called Intrigue, darker blue. This is Aegean Aqua. Mm -hmm. Showing a little bluer than 
it's more of a teal. This is spring, 14 count Ada. It's a light uh, pastel -y green. And this is cerulean blue, 14 count again. I do like blue. Then I picked up Erica Michaels Autumn Berries because I see everybody making berries and I have to get on the bandwagon. I don't know when, but eventually I will be making berries. Then I picked up Easter Babies Berry by Erica Michaels. Uh, I picked up Primrose Cottage Stitches, Spring Wishes. I realized that when I'm putting out my spring stuff and Easter, I don't have too much. So I want to do a lot of um, small spring and Easter and summer pieces. So slowly but surely, I'll pick some up. This is Spring House. I have this in, I believe, Autumn House. So this came out and I picked up these two. They were at the store. Picked up two DMC threads that I needed. Um, I love this one, What Remains is Love by Blackbird Design. This was a release at market. And I love these. This is from Leela Studio, Spirit of Christmas, set one and set two. Christmas is the time that I have the most um, ornaments and, and finishes the little things of Christmas and but I love these and I, I want to say like I don't want to do anymore but how can you not so what a little tree finish full fully finish will be I'll just get a bigger tree and put <laughs> put more ornaments on it and plus um, I want to give do some ornaments for giveaways for the family and this was <clears throat> A new from a new um, spring release from Sat Scattered Seed Samplers, and it's called Springs Messenger Pin Keep. And I think that's so pretty. The blue eggs, and that's it. So, I hope you enjoyed it. The video. I hope you enjoyed what I showed with you. Um, just want to remind everybody when you have a few minutes to say a prayer for peace um, for the people of Ukraine and the people in Russia who are against the war. And on that note, I'm going to end this video. It's been a pleasure sharing my everything with you. And I hope to see you on the 3rd of April. Until then, stay safe, stay well, be kind. Love you guys. Mwah!